Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. It is a pleasure to see such a diverse and engaging audience. We have an exciting lineup ahead filled with insightful information and valuable perspectives. Today, we have the privilege of having two distinguished state agencies with us. Their expertise and knowledge are invaluable and we are eager to learn from their experiences and insights. Our goal today is to not just have share information, but to foster a meaningful dialogue that can lead to productive outcomes. We encourage you to actively participate and ask questions. So without further ado, let's get started and dive into the wealth of knowledge our esteemed guests have to offer. Again, thanks again to our partners, and let's make this session both informative and inspiring. Prior to bringing on our Deputy Secretary, I just want to mention that the chat feature is disabled at the moment. However, the Q&A session is available. So please, throughout the session, throughout the duration, please ask questions. And we'll have my colleague, Rakesh Ricky Pal and Michael Cisneros uh, provide information as we go through the duration of our time together. Again, this webinar is recorded, so we'll make sure to push out the recording soon after the event with our post-event survey. With that being said, I'd like to in briefly introduce our Deputy Secretary, uh, Ms. Sochi Rodriguez Murillo. She's been our Deputy Secretary since 2019, and she's also an Army veteran. She has a very profound uh, bio, bio, but for this, for the time being, we, we limit it to just that, but she'll also introduce herself and briefly go over our division overview. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Jose, and good morning, everyone. Uh, that's right. It's been a pleasure to serve uh, our veterans since 2019 uh, when I joined CalVet. And uh, I want to say first thank you to uh, Ricky, Jose, Christina here at Minority Vets, our CalTAP team, our partners, the Department of Social Services, and of course, our viewers. We appreciate you joining us and learning all of the resources that are available through this joint partnership uh, with the end goal of providing information on benefits and services and, of course, um, you know how to uh, obtain a state job. Uh, so what we do here at the Minority Veterans Division is to provide and bolster outreach to and service delivery to rural, tribal women, minority, and LGBTQ veterans and other underserved veteran populations. And uh, we advocate on behalf of this population by identifying gaps in services and making recommendations to uh, improve service delivery. So we partner with partners throughout the state, um, working with different VSOs, working with different uh, collaboratives and whatnot. Uh, to make sure that we accomplish this effort. Uh, we have a pathway to citizenship program uh, that we launched in 2018 to provide naturalization and citizenship services to veterans and their family members. Uh, this is a program that runs uh, year round uh, with select times of the year when we go out and actually push events on site. But the service of uh, naturalization is available to veterans and their families year round where we partner uh, the veteran or their family member with their legal service provider to obtain free uh, services and filling out the application with the veteran receiving the application fee uh, waived and the family member having the ability to apply for a waiver um, if they meet income eligibility. And so this is a program that has helped vet over 675 vet veterans since its inception. And it's a great resource for veterans out there. So please share that information. We also advocate for Native American veterans and we do that working with the uh, Governor's Office of Tribal Affairs, as well as serv service organizations as the Native American Veterans Association Association and participate year, um, yearly at, on the Native American Veterans Day celebration that takes place at the state capitol the last Friday in September. Uh, we, of course, conduct outreach to our LGBTQ veteran population, uh, focused a lot on, uh, you know, what has ensued since the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and how to provide relief through discharge upgrades and other benefits and services to that population of veterans. Uh, we do a variety of events throughout the year with different partners. Uh, we work uh, to empower um, our AAPI veterans, of course, our African-American and Black veterans, our Latino, Latinx, and Hispanic veterans. And so we do it through partnering, like I said, with um, other organizations out there. We're always open to ideas on how we can improve service and always open to um, 
other events to participate in. Um, so we've conducted webinars on operation stress management, especially during the time of COVID. We conducted outreach to Northern California tribes uh, to supply them with PPE during that uh, COVID pandemic as well. And uh, we do a variety of things. We also participate in the annual um, State Fair Military and Veterans Appreciation Day. Uh, and we have an annual Calvet Leadership Summit um, that we work with uh, leadership to bring our uh, leadership and service providers um, that run different organizations throughout the state to share information and policy ideas as well. So with that said, I want to encourage you to visit our page to look at the different um, events we've participated in. Um, we have some really great partners. We have a newsletter that you can sign up to to also learn about what is going on in our division at CalVet. We're always open to take ideas and, uh, and to work with you and partner throughout the state. Our team will share our contact information with you all so you may have it at hand. And how I like to say every time that we go on webinars or that we meet folks out in the community, if ever uh, you are out there uh, trying to obtain services or trying to know where to refer someone, reach out to us. We like to do, um, you know, we're needed uh, collaboration and soft handoff, but also making sure that we bring the veteran back to our organization to continue communicating with us to ensure that our veteran and family members do not get stuck in the process. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it back on to you, Jose. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy this informative uh, session today. Thank you so much, ma'am. We appreciate the, the information and also your leadership here at CalVet. Uh, we'll keep going on with today's webinar. Uh, as mentioned by Deputy Secretary Sochi Rodriguez Murillo, we'll be putting information. I see the, the chat feature. I know Ricky and Michael are, are on that. And of course, please feel free to ask those questions and we'll make sure to answer them uh, throughout the duration. Up next, we have our very own Michael Cisneros also from the California Department of Veteran Affairs. He's a training coordinator for the California Transitional Assistance Program within the Veteran Service Division, again, here at CalVet. A little bit about Mr. Cisneros. Uh, Mr. Cisneros uh, is born and raised here in Sacramento, California. He joined the United States Air Force out of high school in 20, 2004 and served as a security force since leader until the summer of 2007. After he separated from service, he went back to school and received a Bachelor's of Art in Psychology with a minor in Human Development from the University of California, Davis. During that time, he also worked as a student help within his community college financial aid office and eventually became a permanent full-time employee in admissions and records. His time in student services over a span of eight years fueled an enthusiasm around assisting individuals and helping them achieve their goals. Michael went back to school and eventually received his Master's of Science in Counseling career from California State University, Sacramento in the summer of 2019. During that time, he focused most of his research on the veteran community and their unique experiences transitioning into civilian life. He is thrilled to be a part of something that has the ability to uh, alleviate barriers for those individuals and looks forward to fulfilling careers, assisting them in achieving their personal success. Michael, uh, great bio, great to learn more about you and Thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, the floor is all yours, sir. All right. Thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate you guys um, allowing us to come in and speak with uh, your population of veterans. And uh, yeah, we can go to the next slide. Go ahead and get started. Um, so as uh, Jose mentioned, my name is Michael Cisneros. I'm a training coordinator with uh, the uh, California Transition Assistance Program, um, or CALTAP for short. Um, and today I'll just be talking to you a little bit about um, your benefit, your earned benefits, and basically how to access them and, you know, what's available. So next slide. All right. Uh, so what is CalTAP? Uh, CalTAP is a transition assistance program that's designed to inform and connect veterans of all areas to their earned state and federal benefits, as well as provide continuous assistance and support as their needs change over time. And so what we've done is we've developed different pathways that help veterans and their family members navigate those uh, benefits and services available to them. We have an education pathway, an employment pathway, an entrepreneurship pathway, and then we have a core, core curriculum pathway that focuses on those benefits and services that don't fit into the topics I just mentioned. Um, we do have a service provider pathway as well. Uh, so if you have family members or um, people within your community that do want to work with veterans, feel free to send them to our website to check out some of that curriculum. It just kind of talks about military culture and you know, what, what to expect when you are working with uh, this population. Next slide. 
Um, so this is your California Veterans Resource Book. Um, I believe you're going to be sent a PDF copy of this book after the meeting's over with. Um, but I like to say this book is like gold for veterans. Uh, so everything that we discuss when it comes to California benefits and services can be found in this book. Um, talk about the eligibility requirements for those benefits and services. Talk about any forms that need to be submitted for those services and benefits. Um, and it will tell you where you need to go to um, speak with anybody about that stuff. So uh, definitely take a chance to look through the book. Uh, keep it on your phone if you need to. Um, and if you want a hard copy of the book, you can go to any county veteran service office um, and they should have a, a hard copy for you to have um, to keep in your library. Next slide. So how do you use CalTAP online? We could go to the next slide. Um, so this is our website, calvet.ca.gov. In the middle of the screen, you'll find that CalTAP banner. Um, by clicking on that banner, it's gonna take you to our Pathways page. So you can go to the next slide. Um, this is what the Pathways page looks like. As I mentioned earlier, we have the Education, Entrepreneurship, Employment, and Career Pathways. Um, before I do move on, I do wanna bring your attention to the archives link down at the bottom. Um, Back when COVID happened, uh, we had to stop traveling um, and we started putting on webinars. So all the webinars that we've uh, conducted since 2020 have been recorded and put onto our website. Um, you can go check out what we've done, get the resources that you need. We focused on everything from mental health, distance learning, um, financial literacy. We did a lot of webinars on claims and compensation. Um, Book rehab. Uh, so definitely uh, check out what we've done and, and get those contacts and resources that you need. Um, but we could go ahead and go on to the next slide. So if you were to click on any one of these pathways, like the core curriculum pathway, you'll be taken to a modules page that looks like this. With the modules page on this one specifically, you'll find information about the VA healthcare system, claims and compensation. Um, and if you're just curious to know what your California benefits are, you can always click on module five. Uh, you go to the next slide. So what are those California benefits? Next slide. Uh, this is just a quick, or actually uh, the first one, the main one that I wanna talk about uh, is going to be your local interagency network coordinator. Um, so CalVet does have, um, we have eight different links, we call them, that uh, focus on eight different regions across the state. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about these individuals in the, in the upcoming slides, but uh, this is a good benefit that's offered through CalVet. Uh, you kind of think of the links as a liaison between uh, local benefits, uh, local resources, um, as well as state and federal resources and the veteran within their community. Next slide. So this is just a quick snapshot of what is out there for veterans uh, that's offered through the state of California. Um, on the left-hand side, you'll find information about some of those benefits, or you'll find a list of those benefits. Uh, you have the college tuition fee waiver, this is a fee waiver that's offered through CalVet, um, and it's specifically for the child dependents of the veteran. Now, we offer a fee waiver for the child dependent because we want the veteran to use their own education benefits if they have that, uh, uh, if they are allowed to do that. Um, there's also veteran. There's also programs with the DMV that make it easier to identify as a veteran. Um, so now you can actually get the word veteran printed on your driver's license. Um, and then there's a motor vehicle registration fee waiver that's out there for 100% disabled veterans. Um, your disability does have to affect your mobility as well. Um, if you like to be outdoors, we have a reduced fishing and hunting license that's um, available and a state park pass that's offered at no cost. And then we also have tax programs out there for individuals who are starting their own business or um, own property. Um, now, on the right-hand side, uh, you'll find the different divisions that are underneath CalVet. Um, so if you think of the California Department of Veteran Affairs as an umbrella, all these divisions fall underneath that umbrella. Um, we have a home loans division that's different than the federal VA home loans program. Um, we have uh, divisions that offer advocacy, outreach, and support for our minority veterans and our women veterans. Um, and then we have um, divisions out there for our elderly veterans who are looking for um, homes for long-term care or um, information about uh, cemeteries. Next slide. Um, so before I move on, I just wanna bring your attention to some common veteran websites. Next slide. Um, these are websites that you should be familiar with, not just as a California veteran, but as a veteran in general. VA.gov is gonna be like a hub for you um, when you are looking to get into your benefits. 
Um, you have information about the VA healthcare system. If you're looking to get your education benefits, you'll go to this website, um, claims and compensation, and also viewing your medical records, you would want to go to this site as well. Next slide. This is what it looks like when you do have that profile, um, just kind of makes the navigating that, that website really easy when you have all that information in. Um, and one thing that I will mention about VA.gov is that it is going to be replacing e-benefits. So some of you guys may be familiar with that website, um, that they are phasing that out um, and moving towards VA.gov. So this is where you'd wanna go to get um, pretty much everything started. Next slide. Uh, this is My Healthy Vet. Uh, this is a pretty cool website if you are taking advantage of the VA healthcare system. On this website, you can uh, view your healthcare records, communicate with your primary care physician, um, set appointments with them, and also refill prescriptions. Next slide. And this is My Calvet. Uh, so if you were to go to our website, on any page that you land on, you'll find the My Calvet login or registration button there in the top right hand corner. Um, I believe on the next slide you'll have you might have an example if not um, uh, okay so what my Calvet is is just basically tailoring the information from the website more to your interests. Um, this right here is going to be our newsletter. So every two weeks we do send out a newsletter. Um, it looks a little different now because we are going through a different program um, but you would expect something like this where you would have uh, information about the upcoming webinars that we will be presenting, as long as well as the information about the service providers that we're working with. Them. Um, so if you do wanna follow along with what we're um, presenting or, or putting up for the month, feel free to uh, send your email address to us and we can put you on the mailing list. Next slide. So this is what I was just talking about. If you wanted to provide your non-DOD email address to the CalTAP inbox, that's caltap at calvet.ca.gov. We can uh, put you into a mailing list where you can continue to receive information about the upcoming webinars and um, outreach events that we are hosting. Um, also register on my Calvet, uh, follow our social media pages. Um, we have a Facebook and an Instagram page, and then our YouTube page also has all the recordings of the webinars we've hosted over the last couple of years, um, and then attend our webinars. Next slide. All right, uh, so again, like I, I, I'll talk to you quickly about the local interagency network coordinators. Next slide. So these individuals, um, like I mentioned, are the liaison between um, the local resources in their region and the veteran um, uh, and what they're looking for. So they provide outreach service members, veterans, they provide outreach to service members, veterans and their families. Um, they assist with local emergencies. Uh, back when we had the Paradise Fire, we had our Northern Valley uh, League Cole Wagner, who was up there assisting those veterans with, um, you know, getting them into uh, homes and working with the the, uh, the Calvet home loan individuals who needed their homes to be rebuilt. Uh, so they assist with those things, and they also work uh, closely with the CVSOs in their region as well. They provide leadership and advocacy to the local communities by by doing outreach events as well. Next slide. This is what uh, our link map looks like. Um, so wherever you are in the state, you may want to take down the email address of that link. Uh, take a picture of this slide if you want. Um, this is uh, eight different links, uh, eight different regions. Um, so wherever you are in the state, you can uh, reach out to that individual. They accept cold, cold calls um, and they're constantly looking to um, help out the individuals in their area. Next slide. Okay. Um, mentioned this earlier. There, these are the the services that they provide. They help you get connected with, um, help you get connected with the county services and CalVet, um, as well as the VA healthcare system. They do have connections with EDD and the American Job Centers as well. Next slide. All right, and then finally, we'll talk a little bit about the county veteran service offices. Um, next slide. So these county veteran service offices provide veterans and dependents free benefit information, assistance, and counseling. Um, so whatever, when it comes down to what you're looking for, you always want to start at a county veteran service office. Uh, these individuals are the veteran service representatives in these offices can definitely help you with um, starting these benefits, starting the process for these benefits and uh, holding your hand throughout the whole time um, just to make sure that everything's done right. 
Um, they bring in uh, new revenue every year. Uh, so they brought in approximately 540 million new annualized federal benefits um, and they continue to grow. So next slide. Types of assistance, um, basically whatever you're looking for, they can help out. So comprehensive benefits counseling, um, they can help you get your records requests if needed. Uh, they definitely can help you with filing claims for compensation. Um, if you're looking for a discharge upgrade, they can help you with that as well. Um, DMV processes and college fee waivers, you'll start uh, as well at the CDSOs. Next slide. So how do you find your county veteran service office? Next slide. Uh, a couple ways that you can find them is going to be in your resource book. So your California resource book has a whole section filled with contact information for those CDSOs. Um, next slide. You can also go to our website. If you go to calvet.ca.gov, at the top of the screen, you'll see that find a service provider link. If you click on that, um, you can go to the next slide. It's gonna take you to um, a page where you can put your zip code in and uh, search as far as you want. Um, and it will pop up with all the service providers in that area. Next slide. <clears throat> you can also use the 1844 number that's there on our website as well. Um, that'll take you through a phone a phone line that will help you find the closest CVSO to you. Next slide. And that's it. Yeah. So if you have any questions about any of those benefits that we discussed, uh, or you know, you kind of want to know a little bit more about how to get some processes started, feel free to email my uh, inbox. Uh, I check that daily. Um, so if I can't answer your questions, I could definitely direct you to somebody who can. So thank you again, Jose and uh, Ricky, for having me here today, and. Uh, Hope I can answer some of your questions later on. Bye. Thank you so much, Michael, for, for the presentation, for your time as well, to the entire CalCHAP team. Uh, you guys all do an amazing job assisting our veterans throughout the state of California, and we appreciate the, the collaboration. So with that being said, again, please utilize the chat feature. Uh, I see a couple of questions coming in down the pipeline, so feel free to use it at, at your leisure. We have our folks ready to answer those questions as soon as we receive them. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce our next two presenters, but briefly provide an overview of, on the California Department of Social Services. Uh, the California Department of Social Services began humbly as a six member board of charities and corrections in 1903. The board evaluated and reported on 12 charitable and correctional institutions, 60 county hospitals and charity houses, 57 county jails and 300 city and town jails and lockups. In the following years, the board sought to improve the welfare of children and adults. Board recommendations for improvement in 1908 included removal of children from orphan asylums to good homes, state enforcement on child support payments by parents, enforcement of the school attendance in order to reduce juvenile crime, and enforcement of child labor laws. With that being said, uh, Mr. Daniel Sandoval and Chris Osuma, the floor is all yours. If you wanna briefly introduce yourself, by all means, uh, we'll greatly appreciate knowing a little bit more about yourselves prior to the presentation. Thanks, gentlemen. Yes, thank you so much, Jose. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Sandoval, and I will be presenting along with my coworker, Chris. Hi, <coughs> Hey everyone, my name is Um I'll be a second presenter as well. Um, we both work for the Department of Social Services with the improvement of outreach. Um, and yeah, we'd love to share our opportunities with you. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, all right, well, let's get started. Um, so of course, our first slide is how to begin your state career with the California Department of Social Services or CDSS. Next slide, please. So today's objective is to focus on basically the overall picture of how do we get a career with CDSS. So today we'll be looking over our main websites. We'll be looking over how to search for career opportunities. We'll be talking about the exam process and the importance of creating a Cal career account, as well as the steps for applying for positions. And we'll briefly touch on interviewing and some available resources. Next slide. So why CDSS? Well, we are one of the largest employers in California. We have about 5,800 employees all throughout California. 
from as high up as the Oregon border all the way down to San Diego County. There's offices in between, as well as our headquarters here in uh, downtown Sacramento off of P Street. So with that being said, there's more than 200 um, state departments all throughout California. And of course, a great salary. We work Monday through Friday, eight to five, no weekends and holidays are paid and off. So with that many positions, that many offices available all throughout California, there's always room for growth. Uh, there's always room to expand, there's always room to, to grow as a, an employee and as, uh, as a growth in careers. Uh, so with that being said, uh, for today's presentation, we're gonna focus on just one position, which will be kind of, um, our starting position or entry level position. Next slide, please. So how to get started. We will break it down today for three steps. The first step will be how to search for the job opportunities. The second one will be to take and pass the exam. And the third will be to complete an application template so you can apply to all open positions. Now, one thing that uh, I want everybody to know is that when you're applying to the state, it's what's called a merit-based system. So what that means is that all of our applications and all of our job openings are through our web portal. So that means everyone has a fair and equitable chance to get these jobs. Next slide, please. So I would like to start off by showing you our main page here at CDSS. So our main page has a lot of valuable information where it goes into all the programs that we have. Some of our more popular programs that we have are, for example, the CalFresh, um, CalWorks, uh, homelessness departments, as well as um, research and data. So if you would like to learn a little bit more about all of our programs that are under the CDSS umbrella, I would highly recommend you visit our page at cdss.ca.gov, which we will be adding to the chat shortly. Uh, with that being said, today we'll be focusing on careers with CDSS, if you see where that red arrow is. Next slide, please. Once you click that slide, it'll send you over to this page. This page is very important because it breaks down into three major sections. Get a job with CDSS, CDSS job vacancies, and exam information. Today's sake, we'll be focusing on the second, which is CDSS job vacancies. So when you click that link, it'll bring up all the vacancies that are in CDSS at the moment. Now, next slide, please. Now, this next slide is a slide from, of course, calvet.ca.gov slash jobs, which is so kind as to uh, sponsor us and kind of let us be here and present to all of you. So another resource to finding jobs is to go to Calvet website and then up top where it says Calvet Careers, if you were to click that, it will lead you to the next page. Next slide, please. Which will break down the jobs, all the jobs within Calvet. So you can then break down or fine tune your search to the type of jobs, which will be, of course, the job section. And there it'll come up with all the open and available jobs within Calvet. Thank you. Next slide, please. So for CDSS jobs, all of our state jobs are located and housed within Cal Careers. So Cal Careers is very important because if you are wanting to start your career growth or career opportunities within the state, you will find them here in Cal Careers. So let's say that you don't know where to start or you are um, just looking for a broad range of jobs. You don't know kind of where to start, what classifications you can go into. So I would highly recommend when you go on Cal Careers to start at the very top where it says, get a job. So if you were to click that, next slide, please. 
it will lead you to this section where it says search by industry. So here you can look up by your industry. For example, if you are in the medical field, if you are in the legal field, if you are in um, an arts major, let's say, this is kind of where you can get your, your, your start if, for searching for open jobs within the State Department. Now, for today's example, we're gonna focus on one classification in particular. Next slide, please. And that classification is going to be the office technician. Next slide, please. Which will be located under the office and administrative support. Next slide, please. So as you can see here, it'll bring up a lot of different uh, office support and office admin classifications. But for today, we're gonna to focus on office technician. Next slide, please. Now, when you click this classification, it'll bring up what we call a job bulletin. So this job bulletin is very important and it houses a lot of important links and information. Now, when I say classification, that is the terminology that we use here to basically say job position, job title. Um, so when you hear me say classification, um, that's me saying, you know, a job position or a job title. So, like I said earlier, we're focusing on office technician because this is an entry level classification that requires very little experience and gets your foot in the door to then grow uh, this state career. So with this job bulletin, even though there are two arrows and focusing on our next slides, I wanna focus on the very top portion before we do that. So the top portion of the job bulletin will always say the classification that you are applying for. It will give the salary and here at the state, it is per month and the filing date. I cannot stress how important the filing date is. I would highly recommend you apply before the filing date because you never know what can happen. You know, there's always emergencies, there's always updates, or there's always something that could possibly come up in the system or in your personal life. So I would highly suggest you take your time and uh, divide it by sections if need be, but for sure I recommend applying before that filing date. Now, the other two arrows are focusing on very important information that you need in order to apply. The first is the duty statement. The second is the minimum requirements. So the duty statement. Next slide, please. The duty statement will break down by percentages what you will be doing for that classification on a daily basis. For example, office technician focuses 50% of their daily basis on preparing written materials for the Bureau. So that means half of your time is spent on, you know, writing using Microsoft Office and other uh, admin type of, of duties within your day. This is very important to know and to read because that way you understand if you do qualify for this job, if you've done this and if your work experience and history meet these requirements. And you're able to do what the duty statement has set for you. I suggest you take anywhere from half an hour to an hour to fully read through the duty statement, to understand it, and to see if you qualify to apply for this position. Next slide, please. The minimum requirements. So after you've read the duty statement, after you've gone through each percentage, each paragraph, and you see that you do qualify, you see that you are uh, more than qualified, let's say. Then you go to the next section, which is minimum requirements. Here for every job, it'll break down the minimum requirements you need to apply. For example, some classifications require a degree. Some classifications require a certificate of some sort, which will be stated on 
this link. So I suggest you spend another 15 minutes, 30 minutes reading through this and making sure that you do meet the minimum requirements um, in order to then apply for the job. So now let's say that you do meet the duty statement. You read the duty statement, you've met the minimum requirements and you are ready to go. You're ready to apply. So that will lead us to our next section. Next slide, please. Which is our statement of qualifications. So for today's example, um, we're starting to add the statement of qualifications, which is known as SOQ. So what this is, is in the job bulletin itself, they will put instructions for you to follow and give you what's a writing prompt. So in that writing prompt, you will more than likely explain how you qualify or explain um, whatever prompt they have for you to write. It is very important that you follow the instructions for the SOQ. So if it says, you know, 12 page font, no more than two pages, double spaced, then you make sure that you are doing it uh, 12 point font, double space, no more than two pages. Um, and this is your time to shine. This is your time to show your skills, show your writing skills, um, kind of make your personality stand out through your writing skills and to show the how you've qualified and to show that you are a great candidate for this classification. Okay, next slide, please. And with that, my coworker Chris will be talking about exams and more information for you. All right, everyone. Um, I will be going through the exam uh, search function of our presentation today. So moving back to the website, Cal Careers, where we can get all our state positions um, from this page. Um, I want to show you how you can find the exam. Um, majority of our positions um, at with the state of California have an exam. Um, I want to kind of go over that each classification, each position has its own exam. Therefore, to you need to take that particular exam um, before you apply for that position um, and pass it. So when you're looking for um, an exam, what's for or today's example, which is office technician, um, you want to click on the link that says, on Cal Careers, that says exam slash assessments. And just to want to iterate what the reason why they say um, an exam slash assessment doesn't mean there's two different things. They are the same thing, um, is that a lot of these exams are more of assessments. These words that we use, exam assessments, are used interchangeable um, within the state of California. Um, so next slide, please. Okay, so once you, you know, go ahead and you search for a position. So again, office technicians are example. You type in um, word for word office technician. You will be prompted with that particular exam. Once you click on that, it will um, bring you to a new page, which will be then the exam bulletin. Um, an exam bulletin looks, which looks like what you can see here, um, which is office technician general and typing. Um, it'll give you the general uh, the typing and give you a view of the office technician classification specifications um, and give you a, a, some brief details of what that position entails. So um, from the exam bulletin, you'll be able to, um, well, one, do a practice exam. Um, and there's kind of basically what that is. It'll just kind of give you, like, a, like it'll give you a step by step of what, what you can expect to be on the exam, um, what type of information you know, you can expect to, to, to see. And, um, and again, that all just kind of relates a lot to the duty statements as what Daniel um, had brought up earlier in the presentation. But, you know, moving a little bit forward, once you do go ahead and take the exam, um, you will then need to um, take the exam, you will need to get a 70% or better um, to be able to uh, pass. And, um, Every um, exam, I just want to also point out, every exam has its own, um, how can I say this, time in which you can take it. So, for example, 
Um, if you take an exam for a server classification, again, example, office, office technician, and you um, or didn't get a 70% or, or higher, then you will, um, you, you can only take that exam again, um, depending upon that certain exam, it could either be anywhere from six months to a year. So um, if it's exam bulletin, that will tell you that type of um, information. So for example, you see here in the screenshot, it says a little bit, it says once you have taken the examination, you may not retake for 12 months. Um, some will say six, some will say 12. It will let you know there. So all that information will be able to find the exam bulletin. Um, and if you if you do to pass with a 70% or better, you'll be put on something that's called an eligibility list. And basically what this means is that you are now eligible to apply for that particular position. Um, yeah, that's basically, and then we'll, we'll, we can talk a little bit more about that in detail uh, later. So moving on to the next slide. So um, some couple of things I wanna point out again is um, you, the exams are online exams. Um, so it basically wants to, you want to, wants to complete the questions related to their experience in education. Um, that's why, again, they're also referred to as assessments, not because they're not necessarily exams we need to study for. They're more of assessments assessing your experience in education uh, and what you've done. Some can be written exams. Um, and then some can be taken in, in the form of an uh, interview of, of a panel with interviewers as well. And then um, if you have a, like, you know, examination questions, um, you can go to our page, which is www.cdss.ca.gov slash careers, and you can be able to find more information that way. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So, Couple of things about the examination process I want to also mention are we have two um, other ways to be to get on the eligibility list. Um, one is LEAP. The method is um, LEAP. It stands for a limited examination in an appointment program. Um, is designed to basically help persons with disabilities get jobs in the state civil service. LEAP is an alternative to the traditional testing process, allowing applicants to demonstrate knowledge, skills, and uh, abilities through on-the-job testing. So basically just allows you, like on the job testing, you'll be able to, if you're LEAP certified, you can basically get on the eligibility list um, just by doing, uh, again, on-the-job testing. And um, what you, where you can go to kind of get LEAP certified is uh, dor.ca.gov slash home slash LEAP. And, also, you know, you can go there and then there's also on the Cal Careers um, main page, there, there's a section that says LEAP as well. You can get more information that way. But yeah, I would I would take no. And, and if you, you know, or you're a person with disabilities and this applies to you um, to get LEAP certified, it's, it's um, a better way to um, get an eligibility list. Next slide, please. So on the second way you can get on the eligibility list is by having the veterans preference, which today most people who are veterans, um, this is this speaks directly to you. Um, so as of January 1st, 2014, any veteran, widow, or widower of a veteran or spouse of a 100% disabled veteran who achieves a passing score in the entrance exam shall be ranked in the top rank of the resulting eligibility list. Um, and then what you need to do is based to the veterans preference, you need to complete the Cal HR um, 1093 form. So basically um, what this speaks to is, um, again, if you are uh, any veteran or a widower of a veteran um, or of a 100% this, this is a percent of disabled veteran, what you can do is if you still have to take the exam, if you take the exam and as long as you get a passing score, a passing score of 70, a passing score anywhere from 70 or above, you will be put on ranked one. And basically, if you're wondering to yourself, ranks, there's different ranks. So um, when it comes to eligibility lists, there's different rankings. Depending upon what your, your passing score is, if you get 95%, which is rank one, anything from like, I think it's like 90, 85, uh, so forth, it'll, it'll put the rank. So like 90 to get a rank two, 85 to rank three, so forth, um, all the way down to 70%, um, which is the, the, small, the lowest rank. Um, 
but as long as you pass with 70 percent as long as you pass with 70 percent if you're with the veterans preference you will be able to be on rank number one um and then we can go into a little more detail on how that works later um moving next slide please so um if you do still need you know a little more information about preparing for the exam um i would highly suggest you review the exam bulletin uh, the filing day, um, the exam and expiration, um, the passing score again, 70%. Um, review the classification slash job specifications and the minimum requirements, um, along with the duty statements. Um, a lot of what you're going to be tested on is going to be um, a part of those classification and job specifications and the minimum requirements, along with the duty statements. Um, lastly, the um, State Library, we also, they also provide city guides at the State Library, which you can go to, um, you know, www.library.ca.gov and you can get study guides there as well. Next slide, please. So next thing I wanna lead you guys through is how to create a Cal Career account if you haven't done so already. So, you know, to apply to any state position or really just to access this, this utilize this, um, website with Cal Careers, you have to make a Cal Career account. Um, it's a free account. Anyone can make it. Um, so what you're going to do is go back to www.calcareers. Uh, and what you're going to do is on the, the right-hand side, you're going to see this thing that says create account, flash login. Next slide, please. And then you're going to look down from the left-hand side. If you haven't created a Cal Careers account, it's going to say create account. Um, you're going to click on that button. Next slide, please. And it's going to take you to a page that looks like this. This is going to be once you've you know put in your your information, it's it's going to um, make a Cal Careers account um, where you're going to see in, um, on the left hand side you're going to see account management, account uh, Cal Career account, account information. Um, additional records, you know, templates, documents, jobs, exams, et cetera, right? And on the first part where it says Cal Careers account, you're going to kind of see your Cal Careers ID a little bit on the right-hand side where it says it to, um, along with um, the email, your email address, just some of your soft information, your name, your address, things like that. Um, and, you know, going down on the left-hand side under the account management section, you're going to see um, right under where it says Cal Career Account, you're going to see uh, account information. That's going to be where you, you can update and change your own account information. Um, under that link, you're going to see additional records where you can put in things like your transcripts, um, any documents. Uh, you're going to be able to see um, all your additional records just there. Um, the next part I want to bring attention to is a template slash documents. Uh, this section you want to be, this is section allows you to be able to create application templates. And this is very useful because um, sometimes you know, when you're applying to state positions, it can be pretty long. Um, so when you create templates, you can then use them for the jobs you're interested in too. So for example, let's say you want to apply for two different positions. You want to apply for um, an office technician and you want to apply to maybe um, a staff service analyst position. Um, you could create two different templates that basically hold the type of information that you want to cater to those two different type of positions. That way, whenever you want to apply for another state staff service analyst position or office technician uh, position, you can then use those templates and then uh, maybe switch it out, run a little bit more or update a little bit more data and then, uh, you know, information and then you can you can just send it off. It makes the process of applying for a state position a lot faster. Um, uploading documents is another place where you can just up again, you can upload your documents um, for positions and then just kind of moving on into the um, job section where you can see where um, the job applications that you started, um, submitted and the ones that have been churned are basically the ones that Maybe you just didn't get, just kind of put the, the past the filing date, they're done hiring. You can kind of see that information there. Save jobs are just wherever you've um, researched jobs and then you put a star on it and you can kind of see those jobs that you saved there. Um, along with the exam uh, assessments, under that link, you can see the exam assessment applications. You can see the ones that you've, you've, you've done 
um, and the ones maybe you, you know you, you saved or the ones that you need. And then along with the um, exam assessment records, that's going to be the ones that maybe the ones that you passed and they'll show you how long the duration um, of that exam is. And along with the ones that uh, maybe you didn't pass, so then it will show you, you know, the expiration of those as well. Uh, moving along to the emails slash messages, you can kind of see there at the bottom. Um, this will just be a place where you you could see that your, your saved email, you can see a lot of contact uh, letters under the messages. Um, and, it, and honestly, they can they can contact you um, through the contact message as well. So, I, you know, just keep an eye on those as well. But also, last thing before I forget, um, you want to make sure your information is very up to date in this CalCareers account, because when it comes down to the, your phone number that you have there or the email address you have there, if you're going to be uh, looking for an interview, get an interview, they're going to contact you through, you know, either that phone number or that email. Um, so you have to make sure that information is correct and is up to date. Next slide, please. Okay. And then, so just a little couple of things, um, the application template, you know, you want to make sure you complete the, um, when you're applying for a position, you want to make sure you complete the state application full. You want to make sure, um, when you're applying again, you want to exact the, the exact title of the position for which you're applying for the job control number along with the position number. Um, you also want to make sure you're answering all questions. Don't leave any questions blank in the application. Um, a lot of times what people I've seen people do is they feel like they don't have the certain experience, but um, they don't realize that a lot of volunteer work um, is also experience that they can use that as well. Or they don't realize that um, you, you, you have done the work, even though the title of it sounds a little bit uh, different than what you've done, but you've done the work. You have to just kind of really sit down and, and apply the, the certain tasks that you've done and relate them to which the task of what that position is is um, is basically associated with. Um, yeah, and then just make sure you're completing the education and experience um, sections. Be sure to include the beginning and ending dates of any hours. Um, again, don't leave any information out. Add your experience and volunteer work if it's needed. Um, just make sure it's very full and complete and edit it as you need, as you go. Next slide, please. This is kind of what um, an application template will look like. This is more of what um, the application template will look like if you were to print it out um, compared to what we're doing online. But this is kind of the soft data that they'll be asking you, um, things like these type of um, um, soft data. So, yeah. Next slide, please. And then, so once you've uh, uh, successfully, you know, create, finish your application, you've done, passed the exam, you've searched position, you've done all that, um, now you're ready to apply. Um, so you wanna apply for the job openings as soon as you can pass, as soon as you pass the exam and become on the eligibility list. Um, you wanna follow all application instructions, like uh, Dago said, especially on the SOQ, if they're telling you 12, 12 point font, you need to make sure that you're doing a 12 point font. If they're saying no longer, no longer than two pages, you wanna make sure you don't go over two pages. Um, application templates are completed and you wanna make sure that you have your statement, uh, state, statement of qualifications submitted and ready to go. And then after you've done all that, submit the application for the deadline and wait to hear back from the hiring manager. Next slide, please. Yeah, so to prepare for your hiring interview, um, you know, when you hire, hear back from the hiring manager, you wanna make sure you're doing, you're studying the, the job, study the job announcements um, and then review the due statements. Again, that's super big because every, even though a classification will sit there and say office ignition, every, specific um, job duty could be different. So like office ignition classification would be the same across the whole state. However, the due statement will be different. So that that's really uh, big to, to highlight. Uh, you wanna make sure you're reading the minimum qualifications, making sure that you meet those um, and that you review the department website, um, you know, relate your experience and your knowledge to the essential job, the essential duties and desirable qualifications. Make sure that you can kind of make those mirror and align um, and read 
all the application instructions um, from beginning to end. Um, the state's really keen on making, if you can follow directions, they, they really want to, a lot of it's not to see um, anything extra. They just want to see if you can follow directions and those small details like 12 point font, no longer two pages. Those are those small de details that they're looking for to see if you can follow directions and you can pay attention to those, those uh, key details. And next slide, please. Yeah, in summary, you know, you create um, an account at www.calcareers.ca.gov. Um, you take the classification exam. You want to pass it with 70% or better. Um, you know, then you'll become on the eligibility list and you'll be eligible to then um, complete your state application and then submit any SOQ, statement qualification, um, that will probably, that will need to be put into your application, attach your application, and then, you know, apply for any job vacancies, participate in any, then next you participate in the hiring interview. And before you know it, you'll be a state worker in no time. Uh, next slide, please. Here are some of the resources that we have here, you know, just uh, the CDSS, which is our main page. Uh, the CalVet page is where you can find jobs uh, on CalVet, um, CalHR, um, CalCareers, and the LEAP as well, if you need to get LEAP certified. So, um, yeah, these are some of the more of our resources. Um, next slide, please. And then any questions? We'll open the floor for some questions on maybe into the chat. So if you guys have anything you want to um, go ahead and ask, definitely feel free and we'll be able to, to address those questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Chris and Daniel, for the information. Uh, I think you guys cover uh, a well portion of the hiring process, uh, both at CDSS and across the different state agencies, pretty standardized across the board. So definitely appreciate you breaking down the veterans preference uh, document, of course, the, the LEAP program, uh, making those applications templates on the actual Cal Careers website, a lot of good information. And I encourage everyone, if, if you have a question, this is definitely the time to ask uh, Mr. Sandoval and Mr. Ozuma about any questions that you might have. A lot of great information was shared. Uh, in addition to that, we also have our CalVet HR team on the call. So uh, again, the, the information is there at your at your disposal as far as how to get in contact with our recruitment team. But we have Veronica Parker and Samuel Brinkley on the call. If there's any questions directed towards CalVet HR team, uh, this is definitely the time for it. Uh, I know Michael and Ricky have been uh, navigating the chat feature in the Q&A section as well. They've been able to answer all the questions uh, as, as of now. But again, we just wanted to give everyone a, a quick moment to, to ask any questions. Uh, we're here if it's not just on the hiring process, any, any questions uh, related to what Mr. Cisneros covered today as well. Uh, this is definitely a, a good time for that. So with that, I'll, I'll give it a couple of minutes. If, if we don't see nothing, uh, we'll make sure to close out with closing remarks. But again, just to remind everyone, uh, this webinar is being recorded. We'll make sure to push out the the recording to everyone for 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 everyone today. And of course, please feel free to share it with family members, uh, other veterans that couldn't make it, community members, folks around uh, your own respective networks. The the more information that we can get out there, the the better, right? So again, uh, I don't see nothing coming down on the Q and A section. Michael. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say one thing real quick. Yes, uh, yeah, just, well, just to answer Caesar's question. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the stuff that I spoke about, uh, that stuff is on on the on our website. Uh, we and we do have a, an employment a pathway that does also talk about some of the stuff that Chris and Daniel talked about today too. Um, so definitely take the time to check out the curriculum there, um, and also you know Chris and Daniel are here, so definitely use them as a resource as well. Um, I also wanted to say for those that were asking about the CalVet home loan, um, I know that kind of stuff can sometimes, you know, be a little confusing or, or go over my head. It does for me at least. Um, so I did put Brad or I gave Brad Pedersen's information to Ricky to put in the chat. 
Brad Pedersen is somebody who actually works closely with uh, with me on presentations when we're on the military bases or college campuses. Um, he accepts cold calls. Uh, he's a great, great source for information. So uh, if you're looking for more information about specifically the CalVet home loans or any other programs out there, uh, if you're in the market, um, he's definitely the one you want to reach out to. Uh, so definitely take his, his contact information, his phone number, and email address. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, we do have a question from Denise on the call. If we want to unmute her so she can ask her question, if that's possible. Denise, can you hear me? Not sure if she's unmuted. But if you can hear me, if you want to write down your question, for, for the group, that way we can address it. We'll uh, answer that question at the time. Hey, Jose, I see a question about uh, state guidelines for interviewers. Do you want me to go ahead and handle that one? Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Sam. A uh, quick reminder, everyone. My name is Sam Brinkley. I'm one of the HR representatives here at CalVet. Uh, the question was, are there standard state guidelines that the interviewers have to follow for the interview? Anything an applicant should be aware of who hasn't worked in state service? Um, the simple answer is uh, it really just depends upon the agency. Each agency can manage their interview process kind of uniquely. So sometimes it's just a straight interview. Sometimes there's going to be some sort of assessment or inbox exercise. Uh, I think the best piece of advice is make sure that you're really listening to the questions, the instructions, and that you are touching all points that they ask. I think what I commonly see in the interview process is, you know, you're, you're nervous and you want to get through the question kind of quickly. Make sure that you are taking a breath and that you are following up on every component of the question as you go through that process. Um, anything to add from DSS? Um, I think the only thing I would say to definitely go through uh, each question, um, and yeah, and just take your time. I think the biggest thing is, um, the terminology mirroring the duty statement. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of the times, a lot of the, um, hiring managers, they want to know that you've read the duty statement. So you want to, if they're asking, for example, um, you know, if it's like an analyst position that, that you maybe use that, those words, um, in your terminology, just use like analysts. Uh, this is where I analyze this. This is the point where I, um, you know, took this information in and uh, was able to process it and then give results. And then these are the these are the type of uh, recommendations I have. Though that just kind of shows that you, you you used an analyst mindset to then um, process that that particular uh, situation. So just you want to really make sure that you're using language in the in the duty statement to be able to answer questions um in an interview mm -hmm. thank you so much sam thank you so much chris for that information again the the contact information is listed here we pushed it out a couple of times throughout the chat feature we'll make sure to push out a a thank you email with our direct contact information so if you do have any questions later on uh, throughout the day or throughout the week, uh, whenever the case may be, please feel free to reach out to us. We definitely want to be in assistance to, to any questions regarding veteran benefits and of course, how to navigate state service uh, as a whole. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to thank the California Department of Social Services for, for being here today. It's been great working with both of you two gentlemen and of course the leadership down there as well. Uh, the CalTAP leadership, Michael, always a pleasure working with you and with the CalTAP team. Uh, with Sochi, our deputy secretary here as well, Ricky uh, and Christina, as mentioned before. Uh, thank you so much all for, for being here and please be on the lookout for our post event survey and also our slide deck with the information that we covered today. So with that, thank you all so much and have a, a great rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah, okay.